alert to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro, Laura Rosenberg, we are together again. But this time with the SmackDown champion of the WWE, SmackDown right. women's champion, Bianca Belair. Give it up. What's up, Bianca Belair on the program? Bianca, Bianca, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am doing great just living this champ life. How are you? I'm great. I'm, I'm looking at all the family photos in the background. Some prom photos, it looks like. Some wedding photos, <laughs> all that going on. Definitely my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was telling I was telling Ebro before we came on, and by the way, Bianca's here because today tickets go on sale for SmackDown at Madison Square Garden. Finally, WWE's back at it, at, truly at home at the Garden September 10th. Um, and tickets go on sale today. But I was telling Ebro about your relationship with, with Montez, and we see the wedding photos in your background, but I don't think I've talked to you on the air before about how that relationship started, where, how you guys met. And actually, the story you told me the first time I met you, kind of about you being a college athlete and making your way to WWE. Yeah, well, so basically, long story short is I've been an athlete my whole life. I was a, a, a hurdler at the University of Tennessee where I ran track and I kind of missed like that competitive atmosphere and environment. So I started CrossFit and Mark Henry, who is in the Hall of Fame, saw me on a sports blog or YouTube video where I was at this CrossFit competition. I made my own outfit. So I was out there and like tutus and sequins and just <laughs> doing cart cartwheels on the way to like doing a power clean. So he was like, hey, you know, you have everything it takes to be a WWE superstar. Uh, I can get you a tryout, but that's all I can really do. You have to do you have to do the rest. So it took me two tryouts. Uh, I started in WWE in April of 2016, and my husband was already in WWE for a year before me. And like it was like a couple of months. We we never said anything to each other. We kind of just like stayed away from each other. But I had like this huge crush on him. I, I used to tell my friend there, like, keep that man away from me. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's a beautiful man. Just keep him away from me. And maybe a couple of months down the line, we all went out to like some random dinner as as like co-workers and we just never left each other, each other's side. It's, it's weird. All of a sudden, like we were moving into an, uh, an apartment together and we were like, did we even talk about this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I met him in WWE and he's really just been here every step of the way. That's a beautiful story. Uh, I wanted to ask you too, just as a as an athlete in general, there's been a lot of of conversation around uh, Shikari Richardson not you know making it to the Olympics and you know because of uh, the drug testing, et cetera, et cetera. But just as an athlete that trains at that level of competition, um, I would just wanted to, you know, and then Naomi Osaka, um, you know, deciding to step away from competition. Just the mental health side, the stress. Uh, and here you are talking about your beautiful relationship and just everything. I just would love to hear from you as an athlete that trains at the highest levels about dealing with mental health and about dealing with, you know, just uh, protecting yourself and your mental health. How do you go about doing it? Yeah, so I've been an athlete my whole life. Maybe, um, you know, I started running track around the age of five. And I've dealt with a lot of different mental health issues uh, in college. I struggled with eating disorders and depression and anxiety. And so now I'm in a place where I've learned how to cope with, you know, my triggers, but it was, a, it was a process and it was a journey, even through track and field. Like um, it's one of the most mentally stressful sports that you go through. And even in WWE, like it's mentally taxing as well as physically taxing. And I'm just, I'm just blessed and I'm, I'm, I've gotten through and I'm on the other side now, but Going, uh, going through it, it's tough. Um, and for me, my I learned how to cope with it just through trial and error. Uh, I hit some very, very low points, and I had to really surround myself with good people um, and people that had my back, people who looked out for me, people who loved me and could just love on me and would never give up on me. And, and they helped place me in the positions to where I could succeed. Um, and I think that was that was a very, very key factor in my story and in my success is just surrounding myself first and foremost with people that will love on me and put my mental health before my performance sometimes. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was coaches that I had all throughout my life that sometimes would bench me or put me on the sideline. I didn't understand at that time because they were like, no, you got to get this together first before anything mm -hmm. else come into play. Um, 
and so that was like those like are the two key things for me. It's just surrounding people, uh, surrounding yourself with people that love you and uh, people that will put your mental health before your performance sometimes. So it's probably a blessing in some regard, right? That as you know, when we see the Shikari Richardson story and she expresses that she knew what she was doing um, and she was going through something with the loss of her mother, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that she is not in under the spotlight in this moment, right? Is it, does that help? Cause hearing you talk about, you know, coaches seeing you uh, struggling with mental health and them saying your mind's not in it. You need to go have a seat for a second. That's, yeah, maybe it's not that bad that she's sitting down for a minute. Yeah, maybe this is a, a blessing in disguise. Maybe. You know, I can't really speak for her and her story. Everyone has their own stories and their own right. you know, struggles and how they deal and cope with it and their own story for them to write. But I think the beautiful part about when you go through something is how you recover and how you recuperate. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I, I am rooting for her to have – a this amazing comeback story. Um, oh, she's going to be phenomenal. She yeah, didn't lose any sponsorships. Everybody's rocking with her. You know what I mean? We know her talent. Here. She knows no, her. Yeah, if we're honest, Ebro, she's more popping than ever. If we're right. being really honest about it. Yeah. But you have to, you know, she just, I think it's a learning lesson for her and she'll, she'll come back and with the sport of track and field, um, you know, there's, you have to follow the rules and whatever rules are in place. And, very strenuous rules at that, but um, I'm just rooting for her to to learn from this and surround herself with people that have her best interests at heart and can encourage her to go after her goals and her dreams because we all want to see her succeed at the end of the day. Bianca, oh, I just ahead, wanted to follow up on one thing you mentioned about uh, the eating disorders. And, and is that something that you still have to actively work at and you know, when I look at someone like you, with all due respect to your husband, who I'm incredibly fond of. Oh, he's going to say something loose. Well, you're, you're like a fit. Well, you look at someone like you and you're like, all right, you're physically perfect. Like anyone who would look like your body looks, you'd feel great about yourself every time you walk by a mirror. Whereas when I walk by a mirror, I'm like, how do I just to make sure I don't have man boobs? I'm always not, pulling. Not, not so much for you, huh, Rosenberg? Not yeah, so ex much. exactly. No, but honestly, but we don't talk about how many of us deal with those little things we do to like make ourselves feel okay when we when we look at ourselves and we look at you and we see like perfection but is it still a struggle for you regardless of the shape you're in are you like oh i look too big i look this is it just tell us about that experience it's 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 a um it's a marathon it's something that i feel like never truly goes away um a lot of times i have to like have affirmations all the time and sometimes i always say like i have to fake it you know and so I believe it. But yes, I still deal with um, like body dysmorphia sometimes. And mm. but I have to just remind myself that my body, I use my body for my sport. I use it to go in there and fight girls all the time. So, um, you know, I, I in, in college, I was always trying to lose weight. And now through when I did CrossFit and WWE, I've learned how to really embrace my body and my muscles and see that my use my body for the, the purpose of what I'm doing. But I definitely still struggle with it. Uh, I still sometimes like look in the mirror and I'm like, I need to go work out. I need a little bit more muscle or I need to like tone this up. But I always try to try to figure out why am I feeling this way? Like, is it for myself? Is it for anyone else? Like, I, uh, you know, if someone's commenting on my body, I don't want that to get to me. Um, and I always want it to be for a purpose, like for my sport and for what I'm doing. Um, but I, I, I do little things like I, I don't really weigh myself a whole lot. I don't um, do diets because I get very obsessive with food and I start mm. like dieting too hard. So there's little things that I do, like preventative things that keep me from going over the edge that I still have to do to this day because I, I still battle with, you know, with eating and having a healthy relationship with food because I used to have a very unhealthy relationship with food. Mm. Uh, all right. So that's, um, thank you for sharing that, by the way, Bianca. It's, it's so important that you do. Uh, and, and people can't picture, you know, Ebro, we haven't seen a lot of people who look like Bianca physically talk about this. Like, right. it's, just, it's just incredibly important. So thank you. All right. So um, let's keep it real. Family's over. You said you got family over. <laughs> um, Who is the fastest in the family right now? Can you still can can. <laughs> Wait, you looking like you can outrun Tez? Can you outrun? Can you outrun him? Of course, one hundred. If he was on here, he would even say it too. I am the fastest. I call myself the EST. So she's the EST, EST bro. 
So fast est is part of that. And that's being the fastest in the ring, in out of the ring, in in my household. And I'll say it to his face if he was right here right now. <laughs> oh, yo, yo. So let me ask you this. Are y'all ever just in the crib chilling? And, you know, he's walking down the hallway unsuspecting. You hit him with a move. <laughs> like, you know, he's, he's, he's making some Kool-Aid in the kitchen. You come he, in, you know, off the top rope. Yeah, yeah. We definitely still, like, practice little things on each other. But it's more so, I would say, the, the, it's the kids uh, <laughs> that, 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 that kind of, like, catch us off guard sometimes and come in the room and they're like, ah! And <laughs> like, Trey, our, my, my stepson, Trey, he's like, I'm like, you're way stronger than you think you are right now. <laughs> can, can you, like, give you me stop? a heads up? <laughs> yeah. Um, this, this run you've been on. So I guess the, the last time I talked to you was after the Royal Rumble, but before you won the title, yeah. um, what has the title meant to you? You know, a lot of people who don't understand, uh, wrestling and WWE, they don't understand what the title means because yeah. now that there's more of an understanding of it being entertainment, it's like, well, what does the title even mean? And I try to explain to them what exactly that signifies and what that means about how WWE feels about you and how the fans feel about you. But how do you express what the SmackDown Women's Championship means to you? Um, it means so much. Um, it's so many different layers to it. You know, it's a lot different just from, you know, athletics in general, where you just go out there and put everything on the line and it all just plays out. But the title has so many meanings behind it. Um, I mean, it's... Of course, the physical side, like the grind, everything that you went through through all the years to get to that point, the match that you went through with that person. Um, and for me, it's like it's like everything that's happened up until this point, it all makes sense now. And it's having that faith um, from the company is having the faith from the fans in you that, that, that you are this person that they're putting this trust in you, this responsibility that they're giving to you. For me, the title, it just may, it means that everything makes sense now. And for me, um, the title for me is just justification, uh, and confirmation that every, all the work that I've put in is paying off now. Now I'm on this, this pedestal, this platform for me, where I can be an inspiration to people, where more people have their eyes on me and I'm able to impact people in a positive way. For me, my title run, it's not just about me. I want it to be about everyone. I want everyone to feel like they're a part see? of it. Um, you see, and, you see, you see <laughs> Rosenberg, you see, you what? see, that's why you weren't able to keep your title. That's why uh -huh. you lost it in 12 hours. It was 20 hours. <laughs> was it all you know about him in that moment? Yeah, he made it all about him. He made it all about himself. And that's why it got taken away so fast. I didn't uplift. You're right. I wasn't inspira an inspiration. No. To all the other, you know, middle-aged Jewish boys and girls out there who nah. realized they could have been 24-7 right. champion. You had no words for them. Yo, did um Bianca, did Vince McMahon talk to you after... I mean, you guys put on such a great show at WrestleMania. It, it was, I, I think it was the match of the weekend. Um, did Vince say anything to you specifically afterwards? Yeah, like I just remember going up to him and saying, I hope you're proud. I hope he made you proud. He's like, of course. And then he just said, happy birthday. Because <laughs> my birthday was actually the day before uh, that match. And he just said, happy birthday. And I said, did we make you proud? Did we make? He said, of course, yes. Um, and... You know, it's just like the best. I was like, this is the best birthday present that, that you can give me. I don't know how anybody's gonna, ever going to top this birthday. But he just, you know, he was very proud of us. And, um, you know, uh, you know, Hunter was there, Triple H, who, who's been there since NXT as well. Uh, and I was able to get my picture with him. And he's like, you know, he was the first person that told me um, after my Mae Young Classic match. It's like, you're a star. You, like, I hear that from Vince, too. Like, you're a star. And this is what you're made to do. This is a very uh, Ebro. Hold tight for one second because you won't know who I'm talking about here. But this is an important wrestling question. Do you do you ever communicate with um with Rhea Ripley? Um, you and Rhea are both sort of in similar positions. You're further along. You're more experienced. But like you both, you both have the potential to be all time greats. But you're on different shows and you're going through different things. Do you guys talk at all? We do. We do. Me and Rhea, we've been girls since NXT. And that's why this is so fun because we came up in NXT together. 
Uh, we came to Raw and SmackDown around the same time. And then we were, we're, we're champions now together. And we always talk about how, you know, we feel like we're kind of at the forefront of this new generation of, of women uh, superstars and wrestlers that are coming through. So we're always like kind of like we always uplift each other. We, we've always been able to clap for each other, even when it's not our turn. But now it's our turn. So it's really fun to be able to clap for each other. And we're always just pushing each other like she was there. Oh. Uh, she was there during my WrestleMania match. And. You know, then I won. I'm like, now it's your turn. You know, we we trying to we trying to show up and show out and represent for this new generation of women coming through. So we always push each other. Mm. And, and, and until what about that one day somebody's gonna turn on somebody, <laughs> it's gonna happen. You just hey, came on this show and said y'all were so close and uplifting each other. Nah, Rhea's it's gonna turn on you. Y'all gonna start beefing. It's cool if that happens. It's still a competition at the end of the day. You know, some Rhea. Hey, yo, Rhea, you heard it here first. She's cool. <laughs> She's Let's cool. go. Let's go. It can only be one champion. Somebody's listen, trying to secure both belts. But listen, <laughs> the you and Rhea are interesting because you're both like we've never seen women as powerful as you physically in the ring. Both of you, I mean, are among. I mean, with, with you know, there are some exceptions. The late great China, of course, but like you guys are both different in terms of the power you both bring to the ring. By the way, that KOD on Bailey on the ladder at the last pay per view was such a phenomenal ending to that match. Can you tell me a little bit about working with Bailey? Like, I, I think quietly, Bailey may have become one of the best veterans in the company at this point. She just, she just does everything well. And I know that on television, she's driven you crazy. But what have you been able to learn from from Bailey? You kicked the ass, huh? Yeah, I, oh, I, I did. That 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 KOD on the ladder kind of hurt me a little bit. I almost. Oh, did it? I, I no, I'm saying like it hurt my my feelings were hurt. Oh, hurt your soul. Yeah, I almost wanted to check on her, but I had to pin her. But no, um, Bailey is amazing. Um, I've been so blessed to like my first feud on SmackDown was with Bailey and his care. And you know, I, I got the momentum by pinning Bailey before Warrior Rumble. And then after WrestleMania, I've gone back to Bailey and she's kind of been there every step of, of my journey. And um, the thing about Bailey, I, I to me, she's a locker room leader. She's a veteran. I say this all the time. What's amazing about Bailey is that Bailey makes sure that she goes to the table to eat, but she also pulls up a chair beside her so that, that you can eat with her. So anytime she gets in the, anytime I get in the ring with Bailey, she elevates herself, but she also elevates me as well. Um, and I, you know, it's just been so fun to work with her. She's so fun to, to work off of and so creative in the hell in the cell match. It was just, I think we both shine in that match, but Bailey is just someone who, will elevate anybody that she comes in contact with. And she's so much a part of my title reign as well. I couldn't be, I, I wouldn't be able to be champion without her. So Bailey's just amazing. I can't say enough good things about Bailey. Mm. You up here being nicey nice. Yeah, she's being Yo, really man. nice today. She's so nice, really man. Nice. So we're nice. Not, we're talking about off camera right now. Now on, on, on camera on Fridays, <laughs> she still gets some nerves, you know. <laughs> we still trying to get rid of it. That's why we're going to Money in the Bank and we have an I quit match. So I'm like, this is this is enough. I gotta get rid of her. So I gotta make her say I quit. <laughs> what what's what part of you on TV, like of the things that you say on TV, you know, you have a style, the way that you talk and the lines that you deliver. I go here now. All the different things you've said. What are the, what are the most you? Which which things just came from who you are as a person? Pretty much everything. I feel like I I, I try to stay as true to myself as possible. Uh, so it, it just feels natural and it's just relatable with people. I, I honestly feel like the best way to be unique is to be yourself because there's only one you. Nobody can nobody can replicate that. So you you know in NXT when all the girls were just coming in from out of nowhere. The first thing that popped in my head was like, you don't even go here, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I just tried to make it just as natural as possible. And then from that came, I go here now when I started going to Raw. Um, even like me calling myself the EST of WWE, uh, I, you know, I really feel like everybody has the EST within themselves. And I, I try to live, I try to live by every single thing that I say in the ring. I try to live by that in, in my daily life to push me to be an example to my family, to my nieces, my nephews, my stepkids, like all that stuff that I say, even when I say like, you can't whoop me. I, I actually really believe that. Well, you just <laughs> so, said that to your husband during this interview about a foot race. Yeah. You can't whoop me. <laughs> Hey, Bianca, thank you so much. Again, tickets go on sale today. You could go buy them, Madison Square Garden, and hopefully, assuming everything goes well, September 10th when SmackDown comes to the Garden, 
you get to walk into MSG as SmackDown Women's Champion. Yes, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> Bianca Belair, thank you so much today. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. All right, peace, Bianca. Take care. <laughs> later. See you later. Bye.